Hello everyone, how are you today? Today I'm going to make a video on what is the checksum and how to verify the checksum of a file. In short, it is to verify the file integrity. We can do that on a file we've just downloaded. For example, if you've ever downloaded Linux, you've probably seen a link on the download page about verifying the download. Or maybe you've seen terms like checksum, SHA256, SHA512, MD5, etc. So, in this video, I'm going to explain what it is and how to calcule a file checksum. After that, we will briefly talk about all the steps required to validate an ISO file. And soon, a second video will arrive to show you how to validate the Linux Mint ISO file in detail. This will help you to see the whole process if needed and also which tools you need to install on Windows, for example, to do this verification. I will show you the instructions on both Linux and Windows. Let's start with what it is. I will try to describe it with this video. It's to make sure that the file you downloaded is really the one provided by the team making it and it was completely downloaded. For example, if you downloaded Ubuntu Linux, performing this step of validation will confirm that it is indeed the .iso file that the official Ubuntu team created. It's also to ensure that no one has added anything to the .iso file, like malicious code for instance. It ensures too, no one has replaced this .iso file with another one. For example, if a hacker had accessed one of the servers hosting these .iso files and replaced it with another .iso file but with the same name. Although this step is optional, because you can simply download an .iso file and immediately use it to install Linux, I recommend verifying the file you just downloaded. I would even say it's a mandatory step if you're in a business environment. Before deploying an operating system on dozens or hundreds of workstations or servers, I believe it is very relevant to verify the .iso file after downloading it. It's a relevant step even if you download the file from the official website. And it's also relevant to do this validation, even if the .iso file you have been given to you by a friend. To explain the process, let's take Linux Mint as an example. When a new version of this distribution is released, the team creates a new .iso file for this new version. This .iso file will allow you to install Linux Mint on your computer. Once the .iso file is created, the Linux Mint team uses a tool to calculate the checksum of the file. I'll show you in a few minutes how to calculate the checksum of a file. The tool uses a technique to calculate the entire content of the .iso file and returns a result, a series of numbers and letters. This result is the file's fingerprint after the calculation. If even a single character in the .iso file is modified, the checksum result will be different if recalculated. So, this tool provides the file's fingerprint, which is the checksum of the .iso file. The provider makes this result available on their download page or in their wiki so that once you've downloaded the .iso file, you can calculate its checksum and then compare your result with theirs. If the result is the same, it means you've downloaded the correct .iso file and you can proceed with the installation. If the result is different, you will need to investigate. We will come back to this situation in some minutes in this video. Here we see terms like SHA256, MD5, SHA1, SHA512, etc. Maybe you're wondering what all these terms mean. They are algorithms that can be used to calculate the checksum. Each one has its own way to calculate and returning a file's fingerprint. Some protocols are aging, like MD5, which dates back to the 90s and is now discouraged to use. Why is it discouraged to use? It's because with this old protocol, certain techniques can be used to generate a different file but returning the same result when the checksum is calculated. So, after MD5 came SHA1, SHA256, SHA512. In short, over time, these algorithms increase in complexity to make them harder to break, ensuring better file authenticity. So, which one should you choose? In the case after downloading an ISO file to install Linux, you must use the same one that the Linux distribution's website used in their verification instructions. 
There are usually indicated on the distribution's download page. I'd say that in 2024, the standard commonly used on the Linux distribution download pages is SHA256. If you're wondering why not always use the highest and most secure one, like SHA512, which is available and more powerful than SHA256, it is because the more complex is the algorithm and the more processing time requires for the processor. And today, SHA256 is still perfectly reliable and secure. So, for verifying an DISO file, there is no real benefit to using SHA512. It's somewhat similar to encryption protocols for VPN services. You'll find the same terms I just mentioned, SHA1, SHA256, SHA512, and perhaps even more complex and advanced ones. If you choose the most secure one, it will require more CPU resources from both the client and the VPN server. So selecting the stronger encryption protocol might slow down your VPN connection if one of your devices is old. On the opposite, choosing the weakest encryption protocol will make it easier for hackers to decrypt and spy your VPN traffic if they intercept it. It's always about finding the right balance for the specific case. So let's show how to calculate the checksum of a file. In this example, a .iso file. Most file browsers on Linux include a tool to verify the checksum. For instance, here is the file browser in Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition. Inside, everything is already integrated if you want to automatically verify a Linux Mint ISO file. The tool will automatically take what it needs from Linux Mint servers to verify the .iso file. If you use the tools to compare another Linux distribution.iso file, you will need to compare the checksum result with the one show on Linux distribution website. On this example, I'm on a Debian machine with a KDE graphical interface. On the KDE file browser, with a right click on a file and going into properties, you will find a tab about the checksum. You can either click the button corresponding to the protocol and compare it with the one listed on the website or enter the expected file fingerprint. And this will validate it by automatically identifying the correct protocol used. So, with this kind of graphical tools, it's very simple. But depending on the Linux distribution and the graphical interface, the method may vary. Also, some graphical interfaces do not have these tools integrated. I will quickly show you in the command line how to calculate the checksum of a file. This has the advantage of being usable regardless of the Linux graphical interface you are using. Most Linux distributions already integrate these commands without requiring any additional installation. To calculate the checksum with the SHA256 protocol of a file, simply write SHA256SUM followed by the file you want to calculate the checksum. In my case, it's Linux Mint 22 Cinnamon 64-bit. And there, you just need to wait a few seconds and the checksum will be displayed. Quickly, here are the other available command, starting with Shea, you can use to calculate the checksum. So, if the provider of your Linux distribution provided the checksum with SHA512 hash, this is the command you will need to calculate the checksum of the file. And if they use the old MD5 protocol, here is the command. Once again, you just need to enter the name of the file whose checksum you want to calculate. And here is the result. And now, on a Microsoft Windows machine, how can we do the same things? By default, it's impossible to view the checksum of a file by right-clicking on it and going to Properties. If I click on Properties, there's no option offering this. 
For example, on my computer, I have 7-zip and if I right click on my Linux Mint Cinnamon ISO file and choose the 7-zip option, it offers an option named CRC-SHA. Here I can choose, for example, SHA-256 and it will calculate the checksum of this file using that algorithm. So it is currently calculating the checksum. And here is the result, which gives us the file name, and on the third line, it provides the checksum result. If you don't have a utility installed offering this option, you can also do it via the command line. I'm going to open a terminal window. I'll navigate to my downloads folder, it is where my .iso file is. The command to use is certutil with the dash hash file option. Followed by the file name, in my case it's Linux Mint. I use the tab key to autocomplete the file name. So if I want to use the MD5 algorithm to calculate it, I just have to type MD5. I can also use SHA256 which should return the same result as when I calculated with 7-zip a few minutes ago. And there we go, I remember when I did it with 7-zip, the result ended with ACA and it's still the case. For your information, if you want to calculate with SHA1, that's how you do it, and if you want to calculate with SHA512, that what you need to enter. So, we've seen that we can calculate the checksum and compare it with the result provided on the Linux distro website. But if you look at the download verification page for Ubuntu, for example, you'll see that there are several steps in the process. It's not just about generating the checksum and comparing it. So why? It's because there are additional steps needed to ensure that the checksum provided there is really the one that the Ubuntu team intended to give. Yes, yes, imagine if hackers managed to change the .iso file but also alter the Ubuntu website to modify the displayed ESHA256 result. You could download a corrupted file without realizing it even after calculating and verifying the checksum. With cybersecurity, it can never be simple. So other mechanisms have been added to ensure authenticity. For example, I'm currently on Ubuntu's download page. This is similar for almost all Linux distributions, at least the more popular ones. You will find the checksum of their .iso file on their website along with complete instructions for validation. As I mentioned earlier, I will explain the detailed steps for Linux Mint in an upcoming video. So before to conclude the video, let's say you did the calculation and the result from the file is not the same as provides on the website. What should you do? You need to investigate. The first step is to check if it's not a problem with the download. Make sure that the download of the .iso file was fully completed. You can try to download the file again. If the fingerprint is still different after, do some research on the site and check if you downloaded and try to validate the same version. For example, if you have a Linux Mint 21.2 .iso file, but you are comparing with the fingerprint for Linux Mint 22, it's normal that it won't be the same. Linux Mint also has different versions with different graphical interfaces. So the version with the Cinnamon graphical interface is not the same file as the one with the XFCE graphical interface. So were you validating the correct edition? It's also possible that there was a problem during a copy. This has happened to me in the past. When I copied an ISO file to a USB drive and the copy failed, in my case, I had abruptly interrupted the task by unplugging the USB key. The .iso file was still there, but when I tested the checksum, of course, the result wasn't the same. So, these were the points to check if the code doesn't match when you try to verify the checksum. If you still can't figure it out, check the news about the Linux distribution or their forum page, or do an internet search to see if someone else is experiencing the same problem as you right now. So that's it for this first part about this topic. And you, do you check your installation files after downloading them? Please say it to me in the comment. 
Keep an eye on the description of this video as I will add the link to my future video about the detailed steps for verifying a Linux Mint ISO file. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Bye bye.